Welcome back to This Week in Bevy. For the 0.14 release cycle, Bevy is shipping a release candidate before the official release. As such, the 0.14.0 RC2 release candidate is available now, and some crates are already starting to ship 0.14 RC compatible versions, while others have 0.14 compatible versions as pull requests in their Git repos. You can check in on the Bevy 0.14 milestone if you're running into any issues with the release candidate, and also note that the 0.14.0 RC2 release is on docs.rs, although you will have to go into this dropdown and select it specifically. In the showcases this week, we'll see a Bevy Power Glove, Inkscape level editing, a new global illumination project, and more. And of course, soup. Starting off the PRs this week with state scoped entities. 13649 implements support for tagging entities with a component and automatically cleaning them up when exiting a state. Using the enable state scoped entities system and labeling entities with the state with the state scoped component as seen in the substates example will enable this functionality. And from talking about components and systems to talking about entities, it's fairly common for resources to store entities and thus it's desirable also for reflection to work well with these resources. This is especially true since entity IDs are world specific. This has ramifications for scene serialization and other use cases. As of 13650, these resources can implement map entities. To gain access to an entity mapper, which enables the translation of an entity from one world into another. And we've got more rendering this week. Physically based anisotropy is now available for materials, which enhances the look of surfaces such as brushed metal or hair. Here in the PR, you can see it with the effect on on top and off on the bottom. GLTF scenes can now use the new feature with the KHR materials anisotropy extension, and the support is implemented in standard material as usual. The pull request itself is well documented and well described. So definitely check it out again if you're into rendering features. Continuing with rendering, in 13.423, a new anti-aliasing strategy was implemented. SMAA, or Subpixel Morphological Anti-Aliasing, is now available. And while it'll be hard to see in this video, you can go to the PR and view this image yourself. To take advantage of it, add the SMAA settings component to your camera. Extrusions are a fairly recent development, and as of 13.478, new meshes can be created by extruding primitives. And in 13.676, support was added to circular sector, circular segment, and rhombus, as you can see here. Back in the original PR, we can see that the 3D shapes example has now been updated to include extruded shapes in the back. Workflows that include Blender and Bevy tend to rely on GLTF. The GLTF format allows extensions and 13.453 implements support for GLTF extras for scenes, meshes, and materials. This will, of course, help enhance the Bevy and Blender support that exists in third-party crates in the future. This PR also introduces a new example, Load GLTF Extras, if you're interested in seeing these features in action. And a quick call out for 13.489, the names for many matrices have changed. The full list can be found in the PR description, and note that this will affect Rust and WGSL code, although it will be easier to notice the Rust changes, so if you write shaders, make sure you take a good look at this PR. Starting off the showcase with ships and planets, this video showcases ships, planet terrain, and planet scale colliders with Bevy XPBD. If we skip a little ahead, you can see the ships, and even further ahead shows the colliders colliding with the planet's surface. A new work-in-progress 2D global illumination implementation aimed at working on WebGL 2 and mobile platforms. There's mentions of Radiance Cascades, Restar GI, and other implementations in the Discord thread if you're interested in the topic. This video shows off some of the custom editors for manipulating data in Myriad Empires. Here you can see something that's a little bit more like map design, while later on you can see a whole bunch of other custom data editors. This is a simulation illustrating the golden ratio in the arrangement of seeds on sunflowers. This is for a presentation on Fibonacci and the golden ratio. And taking inspiration from The Sims 1, To Build a Home now includes a multi-tile entity implementation that uses a leader-follower architecture. The implementation takes advantage of Bevy's parent-child relationship capabilities. And this is a fun example that reads a PNG, spawns a UI node every two pixels, and then moves them around. While this is definitely not intended to be shipped in a production app, it is still a fun example and handles almost 13,000 UI nodes. Hiru's Island, which is a temporary stand-in name for this game, got a whole bunch of work done, including the start menu. The game is open source, as you can see here, and uses an interesting set of crates like Bevy Rapier 2D, Bevy ECS Tilemap, and Bevy Hinabi to build out the game world. This demo shows Inkscape as a level editor. The SVG output from Inkscape is manually parsed and interesting features are extracted, such as translation, rotation, etc. 
This is combined with Leon's crates to tessellate into meshes. And as you can see here on the right, is fully working inside of Bevy. This demo is something I'm thinking of as the Bevy Power Glove proof of concept. This is a custom controller glove, including the Zhao NRF 52 microcontroller and some custom casing, featuring a flex sensor for each finger and an integrated accelerometer and gyroscope. The glove sends its data over Bluetooth to the Bevy desktop app, which connects to the glove and loads a Gaussian splat scan. Making a fist makes the camera rotate with the hand, and Bluetooth polling logic is run in a separate thread using a fork of Bevy Tokyo tasks. This is a demo that uses Bevy Ice with some custom patches to render Iced in the same Winit instance as Bevy. There are additional changes as well to integrate Iced systems with Bevy's systems. This screenshot is an experimental crate output that uses HTML parser RSCX to parse HTML and combines it with Bevy eCSS, which uses a subset of CSS to style Bevy UI entities. This is the image drawn in a chalkboard app where each splot is an ECS entity with image bundle components, kind of similar to the way a particle system might work. And the more Bevy projects I see on Steam Decks, the more I want a Steam Deck of my own. Project Harmonia here is running on a Steam Deck at a stable 90 FPS, which is the refresh rate of this particular device. The power consumption is around 13.1 watts. The game itself hasn't yet been updated for the smaller screen and gamepad inputs but the developer includes a bunch more information about using the Steam Deck as a development device in this Mastodon thread, including information such as SteamOS's differences from Arch Linux and the immutable file system. This next game involves soup and making it. Place some plots, place some seeds, order the seeds before continuing, and using physics to get items into the pot. Produce soup using the ladle before continuing and spending more of your money on seeds. And the cycle continues water more of your plants, and watch them grow. Soup won the Cozy Spring Jam and uses Rapier for physics. This game was made over about three days with about 48 hours worth of total work. The game, as you saw, is available to play on itch. And for our last showcase, this is a custom GPU particle implementation. Each trail is composed of a number of particles that have their movement simulated on the GPU using several compute shaders. Triangle vertices are generated based on the position of those particles in a vertex shader to draw trails onto the screen. This simulation reminds me of Spore for some reason, and it's really nice to just look at. <laughs> and while I'm not gonna mention which crates have updated to 0.14's release candidate yet, I encourage you to look for any crate that you might be using because it may already have either a release or a branch that you can depend on on Git. That said, we did have a number of new crate releases this week, Starting off with Bevy Device Lang. Bevy Device Lang provides cross-platform access to the device language. The intended use case for this is to pick the right language for localization. And Bevy Tween 0.5 is out. Bevy Tween 0.5 has revamped its entire API into an ECS-based Bevy procedural and asset animation library. New in 0.5 is integration with Bevy Lookup Curve. Bevy Spawn function is a new crate that attempts to improve the developer experience of spawning entities in Bevy including supporting nested bundles and children. And Bevy Playing Cut got its first release as well, which is a plugin that can cut a model visually with a plane by discarding fragments that are, quote, below the plane. This repo already has a number of examples, including the simple cut we just saw, a screen space cut, and a moving cut. Bevy Terminal Display is at least the second Bevy Terminal rendering plugin that we'll talk about this week. This one has a slightly different rendering in that it uses Braille characters. This is visible as seen in this screenshot. And Bevy Mod Desync is a proof of concept desync tracker. The readme includes information about the CRC implementation and preventing false positives. And while we've seen a lot of first releases, we're also seeing what is almost the last release in the line for Bevy OXR. Bevy OXR is a crate that adds support for open XR, which is AR and VR, to Bevy. This crate is one step on the way to upstreaming support for open XR. There will be another release for 0.14, and the hope is that further work will happen in the upstreaming effort. Bevy Trackpad Haptic is what it says on the tin, a Bevy plugin for triggering trackpad haptic feedback on a Mac. While Bevy Ratatouille Render 0.3 is the other terminal rendering plugin that we'll talk about. Bevy Ratatouille Render uses headless rendering to render Bevy to a texture, and then prints the texture with Unicone half blocks using Ratatouille Image. And that's it for new crates. But you may remember the Bevy Punk example seen here. The Bevy Punk example is built with Bevy Lunex, which now has the beginnings of a documentation book. 
Advanced examples are still to come, but installation and basic usage is covered already. And that's it for this week. As always, we have the full list of merged pull requests this week. The 0 0.14 release candidate and release cycle in general is in full swing. So I wouldn't expect any major features to land that will make it into 0 0.14. And as long as the release candidate process goes well, we can expect the 0 0.14 release to happen reasonably soon. Although there is no specific date. If you want to contribute to the 0 0.14 release notes or migration guides, you may want to look at the Bevy website repo, which has a number of issues, PRs, as well as a content directory dedicated to the 0 0.14 release that does need to be filled out before the 0 0.14 release can actually happen. And with that, I'll see you next week. Have a great rest of your week.